This channel doesn't use any AI tools in the creation of content, and we are proud of that. Right. I uh, was continuing where we left off. If you watched my previous video, the step-by-step -step installation of FreeBSD, uh, we created a new virtual machine in VirtualBox with a nice fresh install of FreeBSD, FreeBSD 14.2. And I got a lot of people in the comments saying, oh, you know, it would have been nice to see if you had progressed on to installing a desktop. And uh, yeah, I kind of agree. It would have been good if I had done that step. So in this video, kind of like it's almost a continuation. It's almost a part two, maybe. Um, but we're going to install a step by step, a simple desktop in FreeBSD. So let's say we're just uh, logging into the newly created well, newly created, you know, nice and fresh and clean FreeBSD install. And just to prove that I am, uh, there's UNAM, it's uh, FreeBSD 14.2 release, for those who might be interested. Let's just clear the screen. And then we'll begin. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to update the system. So let's um, update the core system and any files, etc. So FreeBSD hyphen update fetch. This is updating the core system, the FreeBSD itself, not the user land. And as you know, it, it separated into two different uh, camps that way. Oh, so we found some uh, patches to update. This is pretty good. Uh, SSL, my looks at it. So we'll install them let's have a look see if there's what else that's rescue really okay so we'll install them using freebsd hyphen update install and that's one thing i love about freebsd it separates user land from the, the core um other operating systems don't do that and so if one screws up during update it will affect the rest freebsd it keeps it separate so i'm going to reboot uh, so the upgrade stick and then we will carry on. Right, we're logging back in and we'll just uh, type this out. Password, okie dokie. Now we have to install the, uh, the kind of like this, the underlying X org system. And so what we first need to do is Kind of like Bootstrap, but it's it's installing uh, PKG, and this is the first time we've run it, so it needs to actually install PKG, and then uh, we'll grab a list of available packages. And the default it uses quarterly, which are kind of like slightly out of date packages, not well, three months or something like that. Um, you could change that to latest if you want, and I'll do that in another video, but we'll leave it at quarterly for now. Because what we're installing is nothing... Um, super new so once that's done uh, we need to install xorg so it's pkg install xorg and there's quite a lot that needs to be downloaded but not not super massive amount you press yes if you want to proceed and if you don't and you press n like i just did you really you can't go any further than that so we'll need to proceed and install but this time I'm going to pipe it through less so we can see what packages are going to be installed. As you can see, there's a, a lot of fonts. Um, there's encodings. There's different libraries we need for uh, putting text on screen and getting the graphics done. And there's the various drivers. So yeah, it's, it's all basic stuff. So we're going to install Xorg now uh, properly. Get on with it, man, I hear you say. Well, I'm doing it now. And I'll fast forward the install. Right, so Xorg is installed. The next thing we need to do is clear the screen. I'm going to do that a lot. I like to clear the screen. It's almost not like I have a, a clean um, canvas.
So before we start installing a desktop, I think really at this point that you, you really should perhaps install a graphics driver. You can put DRM-K mod if you're using an Intel-based GPU or if it's like a built-in GPU. You could put uh, PKG install NVIDIA if, you, uh, if you've got an NVIDIA card, strangely enough. So it's uh, NVIDIA hyphen driver. That will always pull in the latest one, by the way. You might have an old card, in which case you need to specify an older driver. So here is a table of graphics drivers that we might need. I'm doing this demo on a virtual box. So I don't need to uh, install a driver. But like I say, if you're using an Intel or NVIDIA, which uh, probably most people are, you'll need to specify which of them drivers you need. The next thing we need to do is edit a config file called rc.conf. And say, for instance, you are using a driver, which you know we've just installed, say, you need to put it here for it to be when your system boots up. So KLD underscore list uh, equals and these are the kind of like kernel drivers that you want to when the system boots up. You can put NVIDIA and then NVIDIA uh, hyphen mode set. You can put other drivers in here as well, like for instance Linux, and that's a whole different topic. Um, or the i915 KMS if you've got an Intel based card. But in this case, I don't need to, but you'll need to do that if you're using one of them drivers. Uh, we'll have a look for a desktop and we're going to look for XFCE. I think that gives a good balance between being lightweight and uh, user-friendly. So a whole lot pops up, just like uh, when you install a file. So we'll pipe it through less. And as we see at the top, what we need is the XFC meta package or meta port. That will bring everything else in with it as we need. So it's PKG install, and then it's just XFCE. And there's a whole host it brings in. And that's what we need. And again, at this point, you would say yes. But if you said no, and then you think, ah, oh, well, you know, let's just start X anyway. And this is what a lot of people notice if they don't configure things properly. They will get the default TWM. It's either Tiling Window Manager or Tom's Window Manager. It depends on how old you are and how you reference it. But it's a very lightweight, very uh, simple window manager. And I actually uh, use this on my system as well. Uh, it's been configured not to look like that, but it's really, really responsive. But if you don't want that, and uh, we'll just go back into root, you're going to have to install a desktop. And we're back to XFCE, and then we'll uh, say yes. That same uh, lightweight window manager will pop up if you don't configure uh, one of our options, which I'm going to show you in a bit. If you don't configure that properly, you'll still get that popping up. So it, you have to install a desktop, and then you also have to configure it. Um, it's something that pops up a lot. So the file that we need to configure, we need to specify here in this file, uh, .x in it, rc, in your home folder. You need to specify here that you want xfce to start. If you don't put it here, if you don't touch this file at all, what's going to happen is you'll get that TWM, that Tom's Window Manager, popping up again. So, just type in what we got. Yeah, I'll leave this uh, in the description box down below. But you're basically telling uh, the system to start X and then start XFCE. So once we've done that, we can save. If we start X again, it should pop up, hopefully. And let's encourage it. Yep, there we go. XFCE. Brand new XFCE. Well, I mean, it doesn't come with much because we haven't really installed anything else. It comes with the basic XFCE tools. Um, I mean, it's pretty cool. I like it as it is. But we're going to need a browser at the very least. So we can open up a terminal, just move it and zoom in. And again, going into root, oh no, PKG 
install, I don't know, Firefox and Chromium. So we'll install those and it'll give us a, a, a workable uh, way to browse the web, which I think every desktop needs. So we put yes, and we'll just uh, fast forward this. There we go, this should be installed. And if we have a look at the menu at top, it should auto-populate, which it has. And there's Chromium in this strange uh, dark uh, icon. And there we go. So really, at this point in the game, FreeBSD is not difficult to configure to get up and going as a desktop. It's not difficult. It might seem strange, and now that's a different thing. Strange from what you're used to. But it's not difficult once you learn it. And we'll just skip through this very annoying introduction from Firefox. And there we go. All ready to uh, search the web with. So yes, it's, um, it's relatively easy. I mean, now, you know, the real fun begins. There's lots of things that you can configure. Um, I'm not going to do it in this video. But maybe if there's demand, I'll do it in another video. But yeah, that's how you put a basic desktop in four easy steps in FreeBSD. And really as a compliment to my last video. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video, uh, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you give one or more of my videos a thumb up, then consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, then please hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos when they're released. Um, I make videos for FreeBSD almost weekly. Sometimes a little bit longer, it depends. I do it for the fun of it. I do it to educate. And I do it because I love FreeBSD. So yes, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.